mixed effects modeling, which is a combination of fixed effects and random effects. So, um, mixed effect modeling is a type of regression analysis, which is a statistical modeling method to estimate the relationship between variables. And this allows us to understand the relationships between dependent variables and independent variables, and how does your dependent variable change when you vary your independent variables. So this is helpful with predicting and forecasting, and then um, is overlapping with machine learning. Um, typically, this includes things like linear regression, least squares, and non-parametric regression. And we're going to be talking about mixed effects to modeling. So, a regression model relates y to the function of x and beta. And so you have an unknown parameter, independent variables, and dependent variables. And this leads to several assumptions that are listed here. Um, and one big thing here is that the independent variables, so your predictors, are linearly independent. So a predictor is not a linear combination of, of the other variables, and your errors are uncorrelated. So, um, and then the variance of the error is constant across observations. So mixed effect modeling is a combination of basically random and fixed effect modeling. Um, random effect models were developed by Ronald Fisher when he developed them to look at random traits amongst families. And basically, the effects are uncorrelated with the independent variable. So if you look at schools as an example, if you take a subset of schools all across the country, and you look at N schools for N, within those schools, you look at N number of students of the same age. Um, and you look at their test scores. Basically, as long as the schools are similar to one another, then that is a random, the differences in those data is a random effect. Um, but if you add things like race, sex, parents, education, that becomes a mixed effect model because those are actually fixed effects. So random effects basically because you can only sample some of the sample population and the students and classes change. They're not always consistent. Students are coming and going and leaving, so it's, there's a randomness to this data set. So fixed effects is something where the relationships are not random. So one case is a cat or a dog is a fixed effect. You can only be a cat and a dog, you can't be both. And whether something's a cat or something's a dog doesn't have any relationship on whether the other one's a cat or dog. So in the above school sample is the student's race or parent education level doesn't change based on any of the other data. So when we looked at mixed effect models, these contain both these fixed effects and random effects. And these are useful for longitudinal studies. So these are multiple measurements of the same thing through time. And it has an advantage because um, it works well with missing values, which is common in these longitudinal studies. So that's something our lab does is these longitudinal studies, and it's very easy at some point to get missing variables for whatever reason. So one interesting thing looking at these random and fixed effects models is that depending on what group or um, focus of the research, they define them slightly different. So reading through everything, there are slight differences in um, this person, Gellman, wrote a paper to try to clarify what they are, and he says we define effects or coefficients and multi-level model as a constant if they are identical for all groups in a population, and varying if they are allowed to differ from group to group. So that would be something if you were comparing all girls' schools to one another, that's a fixed thing, but if you start comparing co-ed schools to all girls' schools to all boys' schools, then those are becoming um, random. So um, we use two program um, packages in R, the LME4, which is linear mixed effects model, and an LME, which is nonlinear mixed effects model. So just like in regression modeling, you can do linear and you can do nonlinear. So the focus of our 
study is we looked at PET, and PET is a polymer that's used in PV modules, on the back of the PV modules, to basically keep people safe if they try to put their hand on the back of the modules so they don't electrocute themselves. However, it starts degrading um, out in the real world. So our focus was to look at these three types of PVT grays and to understand how they are degrading. So this is a longitudinal study, so mixed effect modeling should be helpful for it. We have three types of PET, which is unstabilized, UV stabilized, and hydrolytically stabilized. And then we did four types of exposures. Damp heat, which is 85 degrees Celsius for 85% relative humidity for 24 hours. Freeze thaw, which cycles for 20 hours at 70 degrees C, and then an 85% relative humidity, and then drops down for 30 minutes to minus 40 degrees C. And then we did half UV, which is a constant um, UV light with 1.55 watts per meter squared, 70 degrees C, and a cyclic version with the same intensity of light, but then cycle for eight hours, but then cycles for four hours with condensing humidity. And then we looked at yellowness index and haziness. So yellowness index is a, a singular number value of how yellow something becomes. So as things age, they typically begin to look yellow or brown. Or things when they haze can start looking hazy. So they get this, they're no longer clear and they kind of look whitish and no longer transparent if it's a transparent material. So this is our longitudinal setup. So we have four different exposures, we have multiple grades, and then we have multiple sample types, um, samples in those grades. So there's eight samples per grade per exposure. Um, so these, this is our data for yellowing of our four different type, or our four different exposures and our three different grades of PET. And you can see here that these, um, the cyclic and the hot QV started yellowing compared to these two damp heat and freeze thaw. And this shows that yellowing is from light. Those are the two, only two exposures with UV irradiance so. Um, and so we actually ran a linear fixed effects model. And that model explained 98% of the variation in the data. So it's hard to see on the screen, but the dotted lines here, those are lines fitting each data point. And that would be one sample time, each of these dots, and then the thick line there, the solid line, is for the model. Um, and when you look at the residuals for that mod model, you can see that they're uniform and they're up, up and down about the thing, and kind of random, and our normal QQ plot is fitting very well in this region. When you look at haze response, first of all, you really only see haze in damp, slightly in damp heat, but really no haze in these freeze thaw and hot QUV. And you see it a lot in the cyclic QUV. So haze, we're assuming, is induced by moisture plus a UV component, but, and that's the only exposure that had both. And you can also see that haze is pretty messy, especially in this um, unstabilized it gets hazy, the haze drops, and then the haze increases again. So we um, modeled the cyclic QV by itself. And we did a mixed effects model that explained 95% of the variance here. And again, you can see the dotted lines are for the actual measurements, and the solid lines are for the model. And we did the same kind of modeling here for haze, but on the other three um, components, or other three exposures. And what you can see here is that these actually didn't model very well. And R squared for this, these models is like 0.45. And this is kind of an understanding that this is very messy data, and it's not based on just one degradation mechanism. So there's multiple things going on that make modeling the data a little harder. And you can see that here in the residual data. It's less uniform, even though our normal QQ plot is um, much 
much more distributed. So I'm going to go next through the code that we have for this. So we have our code here that we wrote using our L and E4 and L and E packages. And basically, we pull in a data frame and we um, add our headers and stuff to our data frame. And then one thing we did is we actually pulled out outliers. We had a multiple of measurements that were way out of any kind of understanding of the data and looked odd. So we pulled those out. And here we plotted our data and then developed a mixed effect model, which you can see the model. Here. And this is our model here using, and this is for a mixed effect model, and then we also did fixed effect models for both of them. And here's our model as well. So we did this for every exposure and every type of material. So this work is still in progress. So as you go through, there's less 